What do you got? I don't have anything. Um, padded practice is good news. So uh, just looking forward to uh, to uh, watching the guys practice again today. They've had good attitude and good effort. It's been fun. This first one in pads. First one. Is there anything anything that the first day in pads brings other than it's just anything, real football anything. for the most part? I mean, obviously we don't go to the ground and tackle anymore, uh, but it'll be a more physical practice than what it would be when we didn't have pads on. What do you feel about? Because uh, that's the one thing you really can see last week in your pajamas is how much guys remember what their assignments are, how smooth things are. How did that go last week? I think we're further ahead than we have been in the springs, considerably further than last year based on um, just a third of what we brought in at the semester a year ago. So we're able to move along much faster. Is it kind of fun to watch guys like Landon Cleveland, Armstrong Notum, yeah. and Josh Ford, Stillwater guy. You saw him a lot playing with your kids. Right. Fun to see how they react to being out here. Yeah, it's it's interesting to watch the high school players and how they uh, evolve over the spring. Their heads are spinning right now, but we're getting good effort from them. They're in good condition, which is a little, uh, well, I shouldn't say different, but it's, it's, it's not easy to come out of high school and then pick up into a tempo at this pace. But they're coming along. Um, they can definitely get an advantage being here and understanding they can make more of a movement forward in June and July. With a guy like Obi, a defensive end coming in from Gannon, what uh, what are you looking for from him right now to, to just to make sure he's coming along the way you need? Different than a high school player. Um, we would hope that they would be physical enough to compete over the next three weeks. Unlike a high school player that's just trying to hold on. Um, we replaced a mature player with a mature player in Obi, and um, his numbers in the weight room were really good. So hopefully he'll up, hold up here over the next three weeks. How important is that is that position? You've got veteran guys there, but there's obviously room for growth at that spot. Well, we all know it's really important now that the defensive line's athleticism in college football over the last five or seven years is made the tra same transition you see in the NFL. That's why the draft is going to have quarterbacks, pass rushers, offensive tackles, and wide receivers. It's the same thing at this level. But having the ability to get to a quarterback on the other team and not letting him sit back there makes a big difference in the outcome of the game. Do you have a numbers concern anywhere in your, in your mind? Not really. We're in pretty good shape across the board from the depth perspective. What has A.J. Green brought their running back? Of depth for now. Um, you know, he came in understanding that we have all in. What we need him to do is to bring a physical, mature presence that allows our younger backs to develop. Um, I feel good where we're at depth-wise at that position, but as you know, you guys have seen it. Those guys can go down fast. So we needed a mature guy and he brings that to the table. So far, he's done really well up to this point. Was it difficult? Was that a difficult thing to sell when you're looking at, at a, sure. a veteran guy? Sure. We had a number of guys that showed interest, but uh, those guys have uh, agents that sometimes make decisions for them and can talk them out of going to one place or another based on what they feel like their potential would be to get on the field next fall. But we had a lot of, a lot of carries for another back. I mean, as, as we talked about, the 30 carry game for Ollie is somewhat concerning. Perfect world would be 20 uh, to keep him healthy throughout for us and for his career. He had to carry the load last year more so than what we'd like. So there's enough carries to go around. Mike, when you watch AJ on tape, what's sit out? Um, just what I mentioned, he was physical. You know, he had 47 carries last year in a, in a, at an SEC school. He rushed for 324 yards. Um, he averaged 4.7 a carry, and he was good in protection.
think you brought back six starters on the offensive line. You bring in Glass. Just kind of what's the competition been like with those guys? Obviously, probably tough to deal without pads. Yeah, we got we got a couple guys that, that aren't going to get as much contact this spring with repairs over in the offseason. So there will be plenty of reps for those guys to go around. The one advantage that we have now is there's a lot of reps in spring football. So our ones, twos, and threes get reps. You know, we added the threes in the COVID year, and it's been really good for us all the way through. And when practice is over, the offensive line, they're fatigued. They get a lot of work. So with only having about 10 or so incoming transfers at semester instead of 28 last year, there'll be plenty of reps to go around. And Glass has gotten a lot of work already. He's dragging after practice, and we're not even in pads. What, what stood out about him throughout the recruiting process? Um, he's got a lot of starts. He's got a lot of experience. He's mature. He's got good physical capability. He's strong, and he moves well on his feet. So we were able to watch him on video in the, his conference, which gives us an idea of what we think we're going to see, and we competed against him. So we have a pretty good feel for what he'll bring to the table. Hopefully we'll have seven guys that could play in the first game that we wouldn't blink at. Maybe eight. I'm not sure. We'll see. Uh, and then, as you know, those guys start falling like flies, and by the end of the year, we're down to five. <laughs> Hopefully it won't be that way, but that's been history. Is this the deepest you feel like you've had that position group in a while? Um, a few years ago, we were really deep. Uh, I don't remember when that was. And then we've gone through stretches when we were really thin. We're in a good situation right now in the offensive line. Coach, can you speak to how valuable having an experience? You have to talk louder. I can't hear you. Can you speak to how valuable it's been to have that so much veterans and experience in the wide receiver room? Um, like, like every other position, experience and reps is something that we feel like you can't really replace. You learn on the run, and we've got a lot of maturity in that room. It's, it's a, this is an interesting position this year because we have a lot of maturity, and then we have new guys. There's not really any fillers. Um, so we need the new the veterans to stay healthy and bring the young guys along throughout the season. Um, it'll be an interesting position in recruiting in December and January based on there's not a lot of um, guys that have experience once this class moves on. One of the veterans, Rashad Owens, mm -hmm. does he develop maybe even better than what you imagined mm -hmm. at some sure. point? I mean, what he did last year. He had 64 catches, right? Uh, bowl game MVP and played really good and blocked really well in the perimeter and started the year as a third team guy. Um, you know, when we when we uh, took him, uh, the, basically on signing day, however many years ago that was, um, he was uh, not a high, well, he wasn't recruited at all for the most part. And then we ended up bringing him in and he's really developed through repetition over his career. And uh, it's, it's one of the good stories because, you know, you if you, you put a young man out there and let him play, you never know how good he's going to be. Unfortunately, a lot of times at this level, guys don't ever really get that chance because they get pushed back. If somebody comes in and has maybe better numbers than them, jumping, running, things that might be more appealing to the eye than the actual game. So it's nice that he was able to get out there and play, and now we know we have a proven uh, player at this level. Gunner end up. Gunner is he's with me. He's working, um, and then he's going to leave in May and go play. We don't know. He doesn't know where yet, but he's going to leave in May. Okay. So I'm, I've got him working in the office. And, uh, he has to be there at 7:55 in the morning. Is uh, how did you keep all the quarterbacks in the camp? That's remarkable. You had a returning quarterback, and you had a couple of backups. Who um, one's played some, and the other one's very promising. And most coaches lose a quarterback like that. I think they like it here. I think they're comfortable in our environment. Um, I think they feel like that um, there's a chance that they could play more this upcoming season. Um, obviously, with, with Floors, uh, he hadn't really been out there yet and um, hadn't had a chance to really get a lot of reps until this spring to see his development. Uh, and I, I do think there's a little bit of a swing the other way now with what's going on in the portal. I think some players realize there's a danger in taking that jump and landing somewhere and never playing. And so it's a, 
it's a decision that they or nor somebody would make in their um, family. Uh, it, it's, wor it's worth the risk of doing this, or am I better off staying here and trying to develop and get my chance here? I think that would be a fair answer for what's going on. And these guys, um, Rangel feels like, hey, there's a chance I could play a lot next year. And Floor says, I even haven't even had my shot yet. Uh, the last two quarterbacks you've lost in the portal that I've didn't turn out great for him. The only more from Spencer. Um, no, yeah, you know, and, and obviously Spencer. Um, you know, I haven't I haven't talked to him since then. I don't know what his thought process would be, but um, and then yeah, Illingworth, Illingworth went to Nevada and didn't play. I think he's still there though. I don't know, but but either way, right? And that's a little bit what I'm talking about. That position is risky because there's only one guy in most cases that plays. You know, if you're a wide out and you jump in the portal, you only need to be in the six deep and you're going to play quite a bit. Quarterback's a little bit different. Do you, do you think that'll continue maybe? You said you feel like that's a slight adjustment. Do you feel like more quarterbacks might start to think that way? I, I don't know. You know, I can only speak to what what's, what's happened here, like the two guys that he mentioned. And I think the thing that's interesting with this generation is they all take notes. They know what's going on. They watch what's happening. And so I think there's a little bit more hesitancy at that position based on I, I might need to be really sure before I go. Uh, almost like what happens in the NFL, like a team will sign a quarterback and they know coming in he's the backup. That, that's part of the deal when they sign him or they know he's going to be a 13 guy. Eventually, that's probably going to happen at our level. A little bit with what A.J. Green came in. A.J. Green came in knowing that, okay, all he's going to be the guy, but I'm going to be there and be ready, and hopefully I can get my 8 to 10 carries, and if something does happen to Ollie, then I'm going to have to take 20 carries as we bring the young guys along. Do you have to look for a different mindset, when, especially at a position like running back where you have a guy like Ollie? Or do you, when you're kind of – trying to figure out who you want to bring in or you have to look for a, a guy that maybe is, is, is built for that role? Um, it's, uh, I'm going to say it's like free agency in professional sports. I've never coached at that level, but I'm guessing um, what we've had to do is look for guys that would fit that role and then have communication with them so they understand coming in because it's always better to have that communication and conversation before we bring them in than when they get in here and somebody thought, well, I thought I was going to get a chance to be the starter. When, when most people know that would be unrealistic. So we're faced with that at the college level now, very similar to what the NFL's been faced with the free agency forever as we move toward the NFL model. Have you counted on defense how many guys you have that are tweeners, safeties that can um, bump down? Six. You have counted. How, how important are those guys to have that multiplicity or versatility? Um, you know, most of the time that happens and the guys get here and get bigger than we thought they were going to get. Like, we didn't realize that um, certain guys were going to put on 30 pounds. So they end up growing out of a position um, and moving to put their hand down or growing out of the back end and moving closer to the ball. Um, the tweener at times can be a disadvantage because you have to be agile enough to play in the back end to cover a man cut sometimes, but then you also have to be physical enough if you move up closer to the line. So you have to grow up really fast, or you have to make sure that you don't get too big that you can stay back and cover a man. So we would like to avoid that unless we project it, which we do project that quite a bit here at Oklahoma State. Like we took Jaleel Johnson, he was 208 pounds or something in Putnam City. And he's 265 now. So we projected him to be there, and luckily he got there. Walter Sheet, both of those Walter Shine Sheet boys, yeah. they weren't big enough to play, but we projected them to get big, and they both got big. Uh, so that, from that standpoint, it's worked out well for us. As far as a guy that uh, that maybe grew more than you expected, would Kendall Daniels be on that list? Yeah, Kendall went from 204 to two, you know, almost 240 now. So that's why we're doing some things with him. We can bring him down and invert him now, play him in a stand-up position closer to the ball. Um, he's more valuable. But then we can move him back and let him cover the middle of the field if we want to. So um, his long term um, will be closer to the ball. Um, but I don't know that anybody knew that he would get to almost 240 pounds.
he projected more than what we call it. Well, as you announced the hiring of Steve Bartz yesterday, there's a head coach in hiring. Is there an excitement that you feel around the school, around the program, or around the program? Well, I'm excited for uh, for him and for moving forward. I don't, I'm never around the school. I mean, I go to work. I never, never leave my little area. But I'm sure there is. Um, so um, I, I don't know a lot about the situation other than um, when they said they hired the coach, I, I looked him up and read about him so I could at least know a little bit about him. I need to call him. I was going to call him today, but I just didn't have a chance. I'm going to call him tonight and visit with him and with him to Oklahoma State. But, um, I think – I don't know anything about it. I, it looks like to me Chad was very diligent in the way he handled it and got what he felt like he needed to be the best fit for us at Oklahoma State. This is a different place to coach, in my opinion, based on geographical location, the history of the school, the type of people that are in, by, in this environment, and the – ability to have long-term success. You know, Logan kicked some for you uh, in spots last year. You have a, is it a competition, full-blown competition at place kicker right now? Um, he's kicking for us now and getting quite a few reps. Um, he'll do our kickoffs, and we had him in position for long field goals. He could potentially make one at 63-ish in that area. Um, and he's actually pretty accurate from, from 50 to 60. Um, something from 60 to 63 messes with him a little bit, where his accuracy drops down about 30%. But for the most part, he's a good long-distance kicker and a good guy to have in your bag. Which is, you spoke to Rashad's development earlier. Um, you really have a long track record of developing wide receivers well. Why do you think that is? What, what um, do you think you do? Coach Dunn has been here with me a long time, I think maybe 12 years, something like that. And I think he's a very good um, teacher, and he's a very good um, fundamental coach. So over a period of time and repetitions, when those things are instilled in them, they're gonna get better and better every year. And that's the development of a program. That's what we've lived on here for my 20 years as a head coach. Did you have any thoughts on the NFL's uh, new rule for kicking? Are they gonna implement um, that? I read about a little bit uh, about it the other day. Did they put it in effect? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they read it. Uh, I think it's anything they can do to adjust kickoff, I think is beneficial because it is a very violent play in football. Uh, you know, the two plays that um, still have more violence than what even a coach would like to be kickoff and to be the actual punt returner. Uh, those are areas that we can help clean the game up and I think that if they can um, continue to create some excitement with the play and not just take it away from the game because of the history of it, but also try to protect because we all know, you think about it, if the guys are running full speed 50 yards down the field and colliding with another guy that's running full speed 25 yards down the field, the law of physics is not very good. So it is good for a good collision if that's what you're looking for. So I think it's a smart move to try to improve it, but also create some different ways to get people excited. So safe to say you would be in favor of college looking at that in the future? Sure, I think so. And I think, again, as we – this game is moving towards the NFL. We're two years away from being the NFL. We're just going to be a minor league system. So you'll see most of this. You'll see us patterning ourselves in the NFL. Do you expect uh, Brennan to be all's uh, punt returner? I didn't hear you. Do you expect Brennan to be all's uh, go-to punt returner still this season? Um, well, obviously he's going to do it. He's got a lot of experience and he's done it. Um, you know, the interesting thing about punt return is we have 100. Last year we had 140 guys out here. And if you take away all the, the, the really big guys, we still had about 75 guys out here that could actually catch a punt and return it. There's only about four that want to do it. Nobody wants to do it. Because the intensity. Yeah, I mean, you're looking up at something coming from the sky. It's way up there. You have 70,000 people yelling at you, and other people are running to hit you. And you're not even getting to look at it. You're not looking up at it. And you might it's not a really attention. popular thing to do. So, I mean, it's, you know, guys don't want to do it. A couple more, we'll wrap it up. Do you ever, do you ever kind of make guys volunteer for that role? Or? Well, I mean, I ask for guys to volunteer. Uh, it's just like when I was an offensive coordinator on third and 12, and I said, has anybody got any thoughts? You don't hear anything. <laughs> First and goal on the two, everybody's got to play. Same thing with punt return. I asked anybody want to do it, nobody raises their hand. All good?